so Zen Magnets have started doing monthly contests once again. And this month's challenge is to make an insect with 432 magnets or less. So I'm going to make six insects and do a short stop motion with each. Alright, I'll be starting out simple with a lady beetle, or ladybug, or ladybird, or the official name which I'll put on the screen for you to try and pronounce. I started by making six of these subunits, which start with a pentagon of radius 2, and then adding a radius 1 pentagon in the back, misaligned so that it creates a kind of bubbly effect. I connected five red subunits and a black one for the head to form a hemidodecahedron, or just a dome, whatever suits you. I then added spots by replacing some of the red magnets on the back with black magnets in a symmetrical pattern. I then added legs in positions where they would be least likely to connect to each other, and also support the weight of the body. And with that, the first insect was complete with 142 magnets. Alright, next up, a caterpillar. I started by making a cylinder with a diameter of 9 and a length of 32. I pressed in the loop at the end to make a triangle. I did this for every second loop, and once this was done, I could compress the tube into a thicker, more flexible form. I added three sets of legs in the front, and four sets of pro legs in the back, which aren't true legs apparently, so it's still an insect. I tapered the end with a ring of six, followed by a ring of three. I tapered the head with a ring of six in a different alignment, and added a magnet to fill the hole. The second insect was now complete with 327 magnets. I could control the curvature of the caterpillar by decompressing certain parts of the body. I then decided to make a simple tree branch for the caterpillar to hang off for its metamorphosis. Now to make a butterfly. To begin with the wings, I made a cylinder of diameter 6. I then split this cylinder into small subunits of two rings each. I joined them together to make a sort of hexagonal lattice. I used 14 of these subunits to make one wing. Using these subunits also adds a natural curve that can be used to make a large sphere if you go for long enough. By doing the reflected design, I made another wing. They join together in the middle and still allow for a flapping motion. For the body, I used another cylinder of diameter 6, but this time 8 long. It attaches to the bottom of the wings and doesn't restrict the flapping motion too much. I tapered the end with a ring of 5 followed by a ring of 3. The head is a tiny dodecahedron attached to the front. Finally, I added some tiny legs that wouldn't stick to one another, and helped to keep the butterfly upright. The third insect was now done with 410 magnets. I then decided to make a hollowed out chrysalis for the butterfly to emerge from. Butterflies come from a chrysalis, not a cocoon, so the very hungry caterpillar lies. <laughs> Now onto a bee. Starting with the fuzzy part, the thorax. Although it's a bit hard to represent fuzz with magnets, so maybe it's actually a wasp disguising itself as a bee. The abdomen began with a stinger of a four layer square pyramid. Honeybees die after stinging because the stinger has barbs that the bee cannot pull out, so it destroys its abdomen in the process. The head and the thorax were made in the same way, with two pentagons with rings in between. I added a magnet on the top of the head, and a tiny square pyramid mouth, as well as the usual tiny leg stumps to avoid them sticking to each other. For each wing, I used a radius 2 hexagon with a flipped centre, then squished the sides to make a wing shape. 
I then went back and added a lot of yellow magnets to the head to give the outline of eyes. The fourth insect only took 298 magnets, despite being somewhat complex. I then decided to make some honeycomb for the bee to fill up with honey. I also decided to make a flower for the bee to collect pollen. Now onto the ant. Ants have a very similar body shape to bees. This is because they're part of the same order of the animal kingdom, along with wasps and sawflies. Many ants still have stingers, and some, such as fire ants, only bite you for grip so they can sting you repeatedly. Here's the completed thorax and abdomen. The head began with a two-layer square pyramid with two extra magnets on each side to increase the length of those two sides. Two of these were made, and a ring of ten was used to connect the two sides of the head. Three magnets were added to the neck to help connect it to the thorax. Two magnets were added to the front for mandibles, and two were added to the top for eyes. I decided to make actual legs instead of just stumps like the other insects, so I had to use a metal platform to keep them apart. I did some research on how ants and other insects walk. One of their gates is like two tripods walking, with three legs on the ground at a time. Now the ant was finished with 223 magnets. I propped it up on an angle to get a good view of the legs. Alright, lucky last, a golden cricket. I started by making a cone with rings of 5 through to 12 magnets. I then added 12 more rings of 12 to complete the cylindrical body. I moved one magnet from the bottom of the cone to the end. The head was two radius 3 pentagons stuck together. One of the pentagons was slightly hollowed out to save magnets. Each hind leg was made with two lengths of 12 and two lengths of 11, connected in this way. The leg was folded over and four more magnets were added to the joint. After a leg was attached to the body, five magnets were used on each foot. Single magnets were added for each middle leg and three magnets were used for each front leg. Finally, three magnets were used for each antenna which unfortunately more closely resembles a grasshopper, as crickets often have antennae as long as their bodies, which as you can imagine, might be kind of problematic with magnets, although most of the emoji representations couldn't get that right either. And with that, the final insect was now complete with 395 magnets. Click the link in the description to vote in the contest or see the results. Also vote for your favourite insect in this video by clicking the card. The sculpting and animation process for all of these insects was live streamed, so if that sounds like something that interests you, subscribe to my second channel or Twitch for future streams. And I'm not restricting these magnet videos to just contests, so leave your ideas for what I should make next time in the comments. And if I pick your suggestion, you might just get some free magnets.